In this video, we're going to take a first look at configurations in Fusion 360, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about configurations, and specifically configurations of parts. Now, this is a pretty big topic. Uh, I've been a beta tester for configurations for uh, several months now, but it's just been publicly released in the last update of Fusion 360. Now, this is only available for commercial and EDU users. I don't think it's available for hobby users. So if you're on a hobby license, you're probably not going to see this. Also note that they are doing a slow rollout with configurations, which means that not everybody got it on the first day, and they'll be slowly releasing it up through the next couple days. So I think by Monday, everybody that's going to have configurations will. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to cover in this video. I want to talk about configurations of dimensions and sketches and features, and we're only looking at a single part. But configurations can go much deeper than that. You can get into assemblies and drawings and all sorts of different things. But again, in this video, we're doing an introductory look at configurations, how they work, and how to use them. So we're going to be looking at two examples. We're going to get started first by creating a sketch on the top plane. And we're going to use a rectangle. I'm going to do a center point rectangle and just go ahead and drag this out. I'm going to make it 125 millimeters by 50. I'm going to put a circle at the center, so C on the keyboard, and I'm going to make that 25 millimeters. We're going to finish the sketch. We're going to extrude this out a distance of 10 millimeters. So what we have now is a single sketch and a single feature. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can start a configuration. You can right click on a sketch or a feature and select configure. Now, both of these options are perfectly valid and it'll start the configure process. Now, all that really does is it opens up this configure dialog. There's also a display configuration table. This really doesn't do anything for us because we don't have any configurations yet. But if you click on it, it'll just bring up an empty table. Nothing's been added yet. With this table, you do have the ability to configure what they're calling aspects and parameters. In the second example, we'll talk about parameters and how they differ from configuring things like dimensions in the sketch. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to close this out and go about the normal process or the normal way that you might configure something. You might either select configure here or go specifically to a sketch or a feature that you want to configure. I'm going to use this option here on the ribbon by clicking on it. There's going to be a pop-up that tells you things are highlighted, gives you a bit of information about what's going on. I'm going to just OK this dialog because we're going to talk about it. So the first thing that happens when we start to configure is we get a blue border around the canvas area, and then we have this little configure checkbox here. So if you do a lot of assembly modeling with external references, this looks very similar to the edit in place. It's just kind of the top center of our canvas. The other thing that happens is anything that is configurable will be highlighted. So you can see the sketch is highlighted here in the browser. It's also highlighted down here as well as the extrude feature. To start configuring, all we need to do is click on that thing and then any of the available options to be configured will be displayed. So we can hide and show the sketch in different configurations. So this is good if you have it in there for a reference, say that you've got text in a sketch. You can also suppress a sketch, which will automatically suppress features that belong to it. We can toggle on the dimensions, D1, D2, which are the length and width, and then D3, which is a diameter dimension. And then I can select OK, and I'm going to click on the extrude, and I'm going to use the distance and say OK. And once I have all of those things in a configuration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this by right-clicking, and I'm going to call this my standard. If I want to begin adding additional configurations, I use the plus button, which will add an additional configuration. I'm going to rename this one large. And then I'm going to begin changing the dimensions. So instead of 125, I'll make this 250. Instead of 50, I'll make it 125. Instead of that hole being 25 millimeters, I'll make it 50. And instead of the plate being 10, I'll make it 25. And now you can see that we've got two different sizes. If I double click on standard, it goes back to that one. If I double click on large, it goes back to that one. And we can add multiples here. So we can say that I want to add two more configurations and hit plus. Then it'll add those two. 
you can go in and you can configure this any way you want, but keep in mind that you can get to a position where the configuration fails or doesn't resolve properly. And what I mean by that is if I leave the whole diameter at 50 millimeters, then it's going to have a disjoint in that configuration. You can see that it sort of broke everything. So we do need to make sure that our values still fit with whatever we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and make a very small one here. We'll do five millimeters, we'll say 10, and then we'll say, okay. But once we've made those configurations, if we look in the browser, we now have this list here. We have standard, we have large, we have configuration three and config four, which I didn't rename, so they just take on their default names. Now, in addition to configuring things like our dimensions in the sketch and dimensions in the feature, like an extrude, we can also configure other properties. So in the bodies, if we right click, there is a configure option here. And if I configure, notice that with the body or a component, this would also work for a component, we can configure physical material, appearance, and visibility. I'm gonna use just the appearance option and say okay, because I wanna note that the appearance shows up below the configuration table. So we have different themes. And what ends up happening is we create these themes and then we need to select them for our configuration. So theme one is from the physical material. I'm gonna add a secondary theme. And this is going to be, let's say an aluminum satin material. And then up here, I will just say my standard is going to be theme two. Uh, I'll make the large one theme two and I'll leave the other ones as theme one. So now if I go to my standard, it's the aluminum, large is the aluminum. This one here is the standard steel from the physical material, same thing here. So you can configure your sketch dimensions, you can configure feature dimensions, you can configure appearances, physical materials, visibility of components and bodies. And those are some of the basic principles or properties that you're gonna be working with when you're configuring a design. Now, the second example that I wanna take a look at is going to be configuring parameters. So under modify, under change parameters, we're gonna create a couple of different parameters here. We're gonna say length. I'm gonna just make this 125. We'll do another one here called width. I'll make that 50. We'll do a height and I'll make that 10 to start with and I'm gonna do a whole diameter, and I'll make that 12. So very similar to the standard part that we did in that first example. This, however, now has user parameters. And there is a, a basic difference here that we wanna make sure we understand. So I'm gonna start another sketch. Again, center point rectangle, which is R on the screen, or on the keyboard, I mean. And then I'm just gonna to start toggling to my values. So length and width. I'm gonna add that circle at the center. I'm gonna to toggle it to whole diameter. And then we're gonna go ahead and extrude this. So E on the keyboard, and I'm gonna extrude it to height. And now we have the exact same part that we did in our first example. However, now the sketches are controlled with parameters. And the main difference here is that if we go to configure and we select the sketch, Notice that it's listing the dimensions, linear dimension D5, D6, and the diameter dimension D7, just like it did in our first example. Now, the main problem here is that if we click on these dimensions, notice that it's populated with the value length. Now, it doesn't give us the actual diameter or length dimensions. It's simply bringing up the name of that user parameter. So this is problematic, and if you're designing your parts using parameters, then you wanna make sure that you use this FX add parameters icon. This will let us go in, select all the parameters that we wanna use that we're controlling our design with. And now their names are displayed at the top and the values are inside of these dialog boxes that we can change. Now, this is the way that you wanna do this if you're using parameters to define your specific designs. So again, I'm gonna add another configuration and then I'm gonna change this. We'll do 250 again, 125, 25, 25. And now we have that second variation. Once again, we can still configure things like appearance, physical material, display. We can toggle or suppress sketch or features if we want. But the same process happens. We now have two configurations. The only difference here is if we display our table, the name of those dimensions based on the user parameters are displayed at the top. Uh, this is an important 
thing to consider because if we go back to our first example and we take a look at this, we have no idea what D1, D2, D3, and D4 are. They just simply are names that are associated with those first dimension, the second dimension, the third dimension. So there is a third way that we can do this that doesn't involve pre-creating those parameters and it doesn't involve having those dimension values, just D1, D2, D3. So I'm gonna start a new sketch in this new example. Again, center point rectangle. And now I'm gonna type in length equals 125. Then over here, I'm gonna say width equals 50. I'm not gonna worry about putting the hole in this example and I'm not gonna capture the extrude. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this up. And now if we configure this, and I go to my sketch, I can click on length and width. And now again at the top, instead of D1, D2, it's listed as length and width. And then I can configure those values, 250, 125. And now I've got multiple configurations based on those names that I gave it directly inside of the sketch. Now if we go to modify and change parameters, you'll notice that these are automatically created as user favorites. And if we expand, they're still listed as dimensions inside of the sketch and dimensions inside of the feature. We just happen to give them a unique name. So it's slightly different than predefining those user parameters. So out of these three methods, I would suggest continuing to use user parameters if that's how you use your designs. Or if you just simply enter values in a sketch that you want to configure, consider adding some sort of meaningful name that way you know exactly what dimension you're changing. Just remember that when you do that, you wanna make sure that you add the name and equals, and then it'll automatically associate the name of that. And if you go back into the sketch, it just looks like a normal dimension. But if you're configuring this, or if you're viewing it inside of the change parameters dialog, it'll be listed as that name, length or width, just simply by typing that in, putting equals, and then your dimension. So again, this was a basic introduction to configuring a single or individual part. Configurations do work with assemblies. They do work with internal and external components. They work in detailed drawings and other areas. There's a lot more to this subject, but I at least wanted to put a basic video out on sort of going over the way in which you can configure a simple part because it's not straightforward. There are options. There are always different decisions that you have to make along the way. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.